Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the iOS icon construction tutorial in Inkscape. So we've got our colors on the left hand side, we've got our canvas here which has got a stripe background and um, a radial gradient, a nice smooth radial gradient moving from lighter to darker. And the canvas is 1920 by 1080 so it's full HD. And uh, just gonna close this dialog box so we can get right into it. Um, oh, it looks like I'm missing something. Let me just quickly go and do that. But, oh no, I'm not missing it, it's up here. All right, this right here. So we've got this right here, which is this hexagon. I'm gonna use this as the size basis to do our grilled background that you saw in the beginning of the tutorial. So we're just going to go straight into it, we're going to select it and then I'm going to go and we're going to create some clones off of this. So I'm going to go to path, oh, so I'm going to go to edit, clone, create tile clones. And we want to make sure a simple translation, you want to make sure you save size and position of the tile is unchecked. And we're going to use rows and columns and I entered in 15 by 15. So. If you haven't used this tool before, you don't have to worry about the other presets. But if you have used it, you may want to reset this and then use a 15 by 15. So I'm going to go ahead and create. So we get 15 by 15. And then I'm going to go and activate the snap tool. On the right hand side, make sure that um, snap nodes and paths and handles is activated. Make sure snap to paths is activated make sure snap cost nodes including rectangle corners is activated and then we're going to move them and snap them like this so we want them to look as if this stroke is seamless from one hexagon to the next good and if you want to create the hexagon for yourself um, you simply have to go to the star tool and make sure that polygon or regular polygon is selected Make sure the corners are six and rounded is zero and randomized zero and you can just scale up and you get your hexagon. And this is just a stroke of a hexagon. So remove the, the um, center of it fill and we can hold shift and press D and hold shift D for the dropper tool or go to dropper tool down in your toolbox, press shift and select the black and that will give you the outline. So remove the fill and add the outline and then you have something like this. My hexagon is approximately um, 11 by 9 millimeters. So you can consider that. So we're going to bring up the hexagons like this. Now I've already done one so I'm just going to move on to that one but I'm just showing you what I'm going to do for the first row. and. I'm going to select all of these and bring it together. Oops, see daisy. Let's just select all of them again and bring it down. Ugh. Sorry, one last time. Take my time with the snap. Okay, so we're going to snap it to the side. Let me just duplicate this so I can show you. So once you've done all of the bottom snaps, so every one of these looks like this, you're going to snap it to the side and you're going to get a honeycomb like this. So all of these are going to be put together like what you see here, such that the stroke looks like it's seamless from hexagon to hexagon. So I'm just going to delete these because I have one already that I did previously. It's up here. Good. And then we can go ahead and create our rounded square, which is going to make the basis of our icon. And we're going to set the rectangle tool, or you can press F4, hold Control and Shift and scale up. Good. And we want this rectangle to be 120 by 120. So we're going to select this lock to keep the aspect ratio. I'm going to change it to 120. Good. And then what we're going to do next is just round these corners a bit. Good for the effect. And um, this looks like the correct size for the icon. Let's turn off the snapping. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's about the right size. Yeah, this is the correct size. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a yellow color for now. Good. Then we're going to duplicate it and scale in to about here. Good. 
and we're going to put this over let's leave this here for now put in a different color so we can tell them different and remove the strokes good and I just went down here to the bottom left where you see fill and stroke and left click right click sorry and remove stroke good now that this is all selected I'm going to duplicate this and carry this to the side and for these now we're going to select all of them and we're going to go to um, path stroke to path Go to take a little bit of time stroke to path I want all of them are correct um, converted to paths now they're no longer strokes you can see it's a, a full hexagon path set all of them we're going to go to path and union good so we've got our honeycomb right here and we're just going to move this to the side let's just move this away a bit so it's out of frame of view to the side and let's round these up a bit better a bit more good I'm just going to lift it up a bit good so this is where we expect it to be clipped because we're going to use a clip tool to clip it but first let's add a drop shadow and a highlight so we're going to duplicate it bring it out from the side a bit um, let's carry out to the side first and then duplicate with control and D I'm going to give it the highlight so first we have to bring this down first we're going to change the color of the top duplicate so we can see what's happening and we're dragging this down holding control so you're going to select the top and drag down good and then you can barely see the black here and this is going to make for our highlight and that's what you want so what you're going to do is just zoom in here you know using control and the middle mouse button to zoom in just as you scroll in and you're going to select the two of these and we're going to go to path Oh, let me just zoom out before we go to path no we don't have a duplicate so we need to duplicate it one more time you know make sure that we have it and put this duplicate to the bottom so we're going to select this black one that we see and the blue one and we're going to go to path and difference and we're not going to see what's happened just yet because it's the same color as the hexagon beneath it or the honeycomb beneath it but if we go exact this go to path fill and stroke object fill and stroke sorry or control shift and F and just move up the lightness bar a tad you can see it increase we're gonna put it to the top good and that should make our highlight let's make sure that it's the correct size highlight yes it is good so it's going to be harder it's still going to be hard to see because they're on a white background but we're going to change that pretty soon let's change this orange to a dark gray down here and we're just going to bring it across and lift it up a bit and now we can see it clearly against the black background that the highlight begins that brings to bring that emboss effect all right so for the next part we're going to actually create the drop shadow so we're going to duplicate this top one here go to path fi um, filter sorry and go to shadows and glows and then go to drop shadow so we're presented with a couple of things in the drop shadow toolbox you want to make sure that first the shadow type is in a cutout because you want it to look like it's cut out good and then we're going to have blur radius um, inner cutout or outer cutout sorry and we're gonna have the blur radius increased a bit and this increase the horizontal a bit and apply good and let's take a look at what this looks like make sure that this is black okay not sure I can see it so let's control Z that let's try this again duplicate it once more in fact it's not yeah let's duplicate it once more because I like to see it and increase the blur radius a bit and we're gonna do
try inner cutout for a bit. Okay, inner cutout seems to be showing me what I need to look at. So it's inner cutout, sorry, not outer. And let's see how the blur looks. The blur looks decent, but we could give it a bit more blur. So let's control Z and um, move this up a bit. Okay, we're gonna delete the duplicate and just select the original and we increase the blur slide and apply once more right looks about right oh so let me just duplicate it instead and increase the blur radius a bit and apply okay okay so we're gonna close this out now and then with this which is a our blur radius not sure what that is underneath i'll soon check it out we we'll go to view display mode and outline let's delete this Okay, go to view display mode normal. Okay, not sure what that's about, but that's okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is just put this underneath and bring it down a bit. So we can see what's happening. Okay, so now that we have our highlight, we're just gonna move, go ahead and create a drop shadow. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. That's this gray, our original gray honeycomb. I'm gonna go to filters, shadows and glows and drop shadow. And we're gonna um, use a 3.2, I'll use a 2.1. And we want, we don't want it to really move on the horizontal any at all. So we're gonna have it move to zero we only want it to move on the vertical good and we want a you know cut out and apply is that gonna give us no let's go control and say let's use an outer cutout and see close No, outer cutout doesn't seem to give us, so it's going to be an inner cutout. We're going to go to one more time, go to filters, um, shadows and glows, and drop shadow. I'm going to use an inner one, apply, and close. Good. Then I'm just going to select it and drop it underneath. I'm just going to gently move it down. So it's going to move this. Okay, so let's move this duplicate on top here. And we're going to move it down one more. Awesome. Okay, so now that it has it, let's give it a little blur. Right, and bring it down a bit more so we can see the cutout. Right, and that will give us the grill cutout effect. You have to play about it a bit. It doesn't always come the first time. You know, first time I did tutorial, this came out just fine, but now it's giving me a bit of problems. But you have to play about a bit. But we can see it's working here. 
So what we're going to do is select everything, select the cutout, the highlight, and the comb itself. See that everything is moving with us. Let's move everything together. Oh, it seems to be a duplicate of the highlight. Okay, no problem. Let me just delete the duplicate highlight here. I know, and um, okay. So it's going to select all of this here and deselect the black box. I'm going to hit Control and G to group everything. Oh, let me just ungroup that, take out the yellow G and then push the yellow down. Good, and now we're just going to duplicate this box underneath it, select the grouped, make sure that the original grill, the highlight and the drop shadow are grouped together. And you're gonna to go to object and clip, set, or you can left click and go to clip mask. And we're gonna see that we have the clip. Good, for the next part, we're gonna get this gray rectangle here. I'm gonna duplicate it one more time, duplicate it again. I'm going to change it to yellow so we have two duplicates. Scale it, scale the yellow down about here. Good, I'm going to select this, these two and the duplicate. Uh, in fact, I'm going to duplicate it a third time and put it underneath because we may need it again. Uh, I'm going to select these two here and we're going to go to path and difference. Good, and it's the same color as the box underneath it, so we're not going to see the difference right away. We're going to change it to black, move the box to the side for a bit, and then we're going to blur up oh, for a bit. Um, and then we're going to blur this black box here. Give it a blur of about, say, four. And I'm going to make this blue, this middle box here. I'm going to select these two, the blur and the middle box. Make sure the blue box is above the blur. Good, with the two and select, left click and go to set clip. And we can see that we have the blur going on right here. Yeah. And we can sort of decrease it, decrease the blur, increase it. That looks about nice. Good, next we're gonna add this gradient to this box here. It's yellow, so we're gonna put our gradient to orange. Good, and then what we're gonna do is create an ellipse. And we're going to just duplicate the ellipse. Um, no, before we duplicate it, yeah, we're going to duplicate it, move to the side because we're going to need it. And then we're going to select this box and duplicate the box. We're going to select this ellipse and the box, and we're going to go to path and intersection. We're going to make this white, bring up the opacity to 100%. And we're going to use the gradient tool in the toolbox, or you can press G click and drag good and that will give us this nice sheen I'm going to put it behind our grill so we've got the sheen right here I'm going to use a circle for when we do the sheen for the spanner so we're going to do the spanner set the ellipse tool hold control and shift to create a perfect ellipse then we're going to set the rectangle hold control and shift to make a perfect rectangle Good, and then we're going to change the color rectangle so we can see it. And it's a bit round right now, so we're going to change the rounded corners a bit and scale it in. So it's about here. We're going to go to um, Object Align and Distribute, or you can hit Control Shift and A. Center this rectangle, make sure last is selected, and center the rectangle on the vertical axis. Then we're gonna cut this out here. So we're gonna cut the rectangle out of the circle. We're gonna go to path and difference. Good. Hold control and rotate this all the way around. Um, next we're gonna create another rectangle. We're gonna make it perfectly rounded. Again, we're going to center it. Using a line and distribute tool, which should still be open if you're using Inkscape 9.2. Then we're going to um, reduce the size of this span on top a bit. 
and we're going to change this to a path so we're going to go to object path, um, path object to path and then we're going to double click and we see these three icons these three nodes here we're going to select these three nodes let's move this out of the way so this is not affect no tool this doesn't affect the no tool we're going to select these three nodes right here good and then you're going to make sure that show transformation handles for selected nodes is activated good we're going to hold control and shift and scale in using the scale handle and that will give us this shape right here next we're going to go to ellipse tool once more create one more ellipse make it black so that we can see it reduce the size a bit make sure it's perfect so hold control and shift while making it and we're going to center it on the vertical axis and select these two and go to path and difference and that will create the hole for the spanner then we can unify these two go to path and union and we can add the spanner to the icon we're going to go ahead and turn it let's bring this down here because we've reached so far good so what we're going to do here go to the circle oh give this the gradient first so i want it to have the same gradient as the box so i'm going to go to gradient tool here no gradient i'm going to select um this gradient right here and put this to the top and put this to the side good and then we're going to bring down the circle that we duplicated when we did the sheen and we're going to bring it down and making sure that it lines up with the sheen that we did originally we're going to duplicate the spanner select the circle go to path and intersect good and we're going to give it the same white gradient so we're going to go to the gradient tool right here and we're going to give it the white gradient and all we're going to do is move gradient such that reflects the sheen on the box let's give it a slight drop shadow and that is the ios icon construction tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions you know be sure to ask if you want to see more like this hit the subscribe button if you have um, recommendations that you wish to add to the tutorial you know um maybe some understandings of shortcuts or you know other inkscape fun functionality that would make this easier you know be, be free to i appreciate that you know everybody appreciates that in the comment sections that helps everybody and um i still have a lot to learn so you know feel free to add that constructive um those constructive points i do appreciate that so i'm going to move on to another inkscape tutorial but until we see each other again get up and design a new dawn later